Have you ever seen one of those musicians on the street that make music playing PVC pipes? By using pipes of different lengths, you can play different notes. But if you want to play more notes, you'll need more pipes. In fact, as many pipes as notes you want to play. And things can get crowded pretty quickly. And it reaches a point where it's quite, quite, quite impractical. So I'm pretty sure there is a better way. And the first thing that comes to mind is that if to play a different note, you need a different pipe length. If you get one pipe inside another pipe, you can get different notes. with what basically is still one pipe. And this movement looks like something that I could easily automate. The only thing that I'm not loving about this idea is how insanely long this is going to be for the lower notes. Because the longer the pipe, the lower the note, and this, this sounds amazing. But I can stack more than two pipes. So I think I have a crazy idea that could work. So I used Onshape to design this monster of a quadruple telescopic pipe collapser to see if I can make this sound like a huge pipe in this compact space. So now it's just a matter of, of 3D printing, finding the pipes and assembling it. Easy. Step one, finding three pipes that I can stack into each other as tightly as possible to have the best sound. I'm using the white side of this pipe to fit it into this one. And I've glued this 3D printed adapter on this end to fit it tightly on this one. Step one, complete. Repeat that step three more times and we have four telescopic pipes. Next, I printed this bracketing here for the smaller diameter pipes. This is the bracket for the second diameter. And the second section is ready. And this is the bracket for the third section. As it is, this isn't very rigid, so it's time to add a frame to, to whatever this is. But first, I need to put some wheels in this so it can slide on this aluminum extrusion. And just like that, we have this contraption that will hopefully cover the entire first octave. This is the point where you slap the pipe that is connected all the way through here, turns around down here, turns back around here, and the sound comes out through here. In theory, just by expanding or retracting the three sections, you could change the note, but this is, this is underwhelming, to, to say the least. I mean, I can barely hear the note changing and there is almost no sound coming from it. Could it be that all these diameter changes and all the bends and going from a thick pipe to a thin pipe and back to a thick pipe, maybe that's it in all the sound? <laughs> Could that be the issue? <laughs> Give me a second. Okay, I made this quick test as half of the bends. The bend is made out of PVC instead of 3D printed parts and it can be extended in three sections just to see if it improves. There is a slightly better sound, but it's... Sounds slightly better, but it's not even close to this. Even with one pipe inside the other... It 
Sounds way better. A lot. I think I see where this is going, but there is one more thing that I want to try. What if I make holes in a pipe like if it was a recorder? Would that be enough to change the note? I wonder if making more holes for the same note will make any difference. Three holes make the sound come out better than one, but I, I, I think I'm gonna have to go with a straight pipe. It was there all along, <laughs> from the beginning. And now that I know how I need to change the notes, I'm gonna take care of the actual slapping of the pipes. And for that, I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna be using this a lot. I sometimes try to make my life easier here in the shop with all this assembling and disassembling and this holds the tips for the screws that I use the most. These are held in here using magnets and that way I can change tips. Super fast. <laughs> but I use it so much that I've already broken it because this was just a temporary test. But it works so well that I want to make it a permanent solution. So it's time for today's video sponsor, PCBWay. I just went to PCBWay.com, uploaded the files for all the parts and selected the amount, the material and color in all the four parts. In this case, one of each, nylon and black, and placed the order. And as always, the parts arrived here in no time and they are perfect. So now I just need to add some magnets and put it back together. Look at the fit. And PCB Way not only does 3D printing, they also do CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and a lot more. And as you can see, the quality is amazing. So go and give PCB Way a try following the link in the description. And now let's see if we can get some slapping going. To automate the slapping, first I need to decide what am I going to slap the pipe with. So I've been doing some tests. And I think from them all, this one is the best. I made this using two different yoga mats, a thin one and a thick one. I cut them to size and then I sandwiched them between two 3D printed brackets. And I chose this one first because it's the one that has the least amount of extra noise when hitting it, but also because this is the one that is the easiest to replicate. If I make five like this and mount them here, all of them will hit the pipe in the exact same spot and will make the same noise. And the next step now is to automate this, so this hits the pipe whenever I need. I tried <laughs> different contraptions with different success rates, like this one with a very bad signal to noise ratio, or this one that kind of works but it's not very predictable, and even if I make it work like this, sometimes the motor loses steps when it tries to pull the string when the paddle is going up. And for once, I think I'm trying to make it too complicated. I think I, I can make it simpler. Simpler. Sim simpler. So this is my simpler solution, the paddle attached to the motor. I think with this system I get the best consistency. I can hit the pipe the same way every time. And I can even adjust how hard I hit the pipe. I think that this is good enough as a pipe slapping solution, so let's solve now the pipe moving. This looks like this is the good one, so I went and bought some fancy pipes, and now we need to move them, and I think this will require more power than the slapping, so I went and got a beefier motor. This is so heavy. And I printed a bracket for that monster. And I printed a nylon pulley on the Prusa XL just for this motor that even has a key and a keyway. <laughs> of course, I'm planning on having more than one pipe, and this, I hope, is the shortest one. So the long one can get really, really long, and I don't like to have this hanging unsupported. So I made this bracket for the other end that has these wheels in here that will slide on this piece of steel in here.
And now I need to add another bracket with a pulley on this end for the return of the belt to move the pipe. So this goes here. I need a clamp for the belt here. And now I need to tension the belt. And with all the wiring in place, it moves. So if I reattach the pipe slapper that we made earlier and screw the required electronics, then we have a complete unit. But I think we, we can all agree that one pipe won't cut it. So I made more. Quite, quite a few more. This, this is the longest one. It's very, it's very long, very long. But I don't think I will be able to play this on the table. I, I, I need a frame or something to, to put them. Oh, this is super heavy. So I made these squares that are exactly straight, just for balance, and I will attach all the pipes to them. And you may be thinking, wouldn't it be better to weld a structure because those things are heavy? And well, I, I did. I designed a complete steel structure and I cut everything to length, welded it, made the entire structure. It was a lot of work, but somehow it wasn't straight, so I couldn't use it, so I had to scrap it. But I'm pretty sure that this, that is a completely temporary solution, will work first try. I think this nonsense is more or less finished and in tune, so let me show you how it works, but first, let's turn it on. First, I need to power on all the power supplies and connect all the electronics, and this starts the homing sequence. First, the slappers on each pipe, and then the pipes. The slapper homing sequence first disables the motor, then brings the slapper back all the way until it reaches the end stop, and then the slapper pushes back against this, which is a hollow half sphere made out of TPU and filled with sand. This is in here to take away the vibrations from the slapper once it's come back after hitting the pipe. As you can see, without pushing against it, the slapper keeps vibrating for a very long time which ends up causing issues and, and we don't need any more issues. And to home the pipes, I just move them back until they reach the end stop. Nothing too complicated in here. And now I will run you through how it is supposed to work. Everything starts in this keyboard that I divided into two sections. The top section controls the slappers, and the bottom section controls the nodes on each pipe. For each pipe, I have a set that goes from 8 to 11 keys that controls the position of that pipe and therefore the note that it produces, which is kind of the end goal, right? The keystrokes from the keyboard are sent to the computer. The computer is running a Python script that just remaps the keystrokes and sends them via USB to this Arduino in here that then distributes the signal to this, 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 and this Arduino in here that then generate the signals for all the motor drivers for the pipes and the slappers. And right now, it can go all the way from G1 all the way to D3 or so I think. I can also automate the heating at different speeds or program different rhythms. But you know what happens when I start a project that is related to music? I know nothing about music, that's why I asked Luis to help me. Hey, Luis came all right. the way from Paris to see and test this contraption and brought all the right equipment to record it. He taught me how to properly tune this thing. I think it's a C3 or C2 maybe. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And right. then he got to work. This is just a taste of what Luis did with this thing. If you want to see the entire project, go and check his channel. You won't regret it. By the way, Luis just told me that he has released a new plugin with hundreds of instruments from around the world and a plugin to 
fix your mangled audio, just go and check it out. I will leave a link in the description. And that's it for this video. Thanks a lot to all my members and Patreons. Thank you. And now please go and make something!